Hello and welcome to AUC TV. This is Heidi Nabawi, and today I will be presenting this week's news bulletin in addition to a short interview. The stories that will be, co that will be covered today are the following. The AUC girls football team, theater and film clubs event, MCA's relaunch, and the 6th of October weekend. The AUC girls football team started practicing for the B Berlin Worldwide Tournament, which is taking place at Berlin Stadium on the 13th till the 18th of November. They've been practicing six hours a week ever <laughs> since the start of the fall 2019 semester. The coach is preparing the team mentally and physically for the tournament as they are aiming to reach a good position in the worldwide tournament. Players are excited to play against teams from all around the world. However, they are a bit anxious as the other teams are very professional. The Office of Athletics is organizing matches for the team every Thursday with competitive teams all around Egypt to get the team ready for the Berlin tournament. times a week and uh, each week we have uh, friendly uh, against other teams so we so, so be prepared for the competition. Uh, we have certified uh, professional coaches and certified uh, assistant coaches. Uh, we have four players uh, who are on the national team in Egypt so this is giving us emotional and physical support for the tournament. So I guess we're competing, competing for the title uh, this time. Um, uh, most of the team players play you know, on other teams and in, in other clubs. So uh, most of us are professional players. So this is giving us um, a good opportunity to have in it, to win it this time. On Wednesday, the 25th of September 2019, the Theatre and Film Club, also known as TFC, brought to AUC campus for the first time ever for their Hall of Fame series, the superstar and number one, Mohammed Ramadan. The first event in the semester and the gates were full of people coming, coming to see one of the fast rising stars in Egypt. The 31-year-old star talked about his journey to success and how he went from an 18-year-old living with his parents in a low-class area to becoming one of the most trending names in Egypt and the Middle East. Till this day, Ramadan acknowledges the fact that international star Omar al-Sharif predicted his success and told him that he will cross the borders of the Middle East. It's going to be an amazing day because for the very first time we are hosting Mohammed Ramadan in our very famous Hall of Fame event. Uh, we are the first club to come down with an event this semester. So as you can see people are already lined up outside and it's going to be an amazing day uh, because number one is with us. So yeah, well, let's have a good time. After the interview, Ramadan sang his famous song number one, then was gifted an award on the, beha on the behalf of of the university and TFC by their representative Karim. The Mass Communication Association's relaunch event successfully took place on Wednesday, October 2nd. The association was not running for the past semesters due to a lack of candidates wanting to run for presidency. The event was held at the AUC waterfalls behind Mu'taz al-Alfi Hall. Firas al-Atrakshi, head of JRMC department, as well as Dr. Hisham Dinnana, MCA faculty advisor expressed their gratitude and happiness regarding their enthusiasm and excitement for the rebirth of MCA. President of MCA, Nada Tare, was relieved by the end of the event and happy with the turnout, as she was worried the relaunch wouldn't be successful because of the past years not being active. Because most of my members could attend the event, and this is a success in its own. And uh, many of the GRMC professors also could attend the event, and uh, their feedback was really good. And um, I'm pleased. <laughs> the association hired the Sinatra's band to entertain the guests whilst they, they enjoyed their brunch and beverages and mingled with the team. Students often look for any chance to de-stress between, in between exams, which is why the 6th of October weekend was a great opportunity. This year, the 6th of October falls on a Sunday, making it a long weekend and a chance for students to travel or enjoy an extra day off. Many students took the chance to travel to Laina Sukhna in order to enjoy their last bits of summer before the weather changes and midterms kick in. Whether their main goal is to party or just hang out with friends and families on the beach, students had many options this weekend. 
One important thing to keep in mind is that AUCNs have managed to enjoy their time away from, from the university. The long weekend was very beneficial for our uh, AUC community uh, due to the fact that it had us study and helped us relax our minds. And we had a really good time this weekend. We are celebrating the uh, 6th of October and we're getting ready for our midterms. While not everyone had the luxury to travel, Cairo also had several options, one being AUC Tahrir campus's events. The Greek campus offered a day of celebration for students to take a quick break from studying. The party hosted a lot of DJs and different types of house music. This was all for today's news bulletin. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for our interview segment. Hello and welcome to AUC TV. This is Heidi Nabawi and today I will be presenting this week's news bulletin in addition to a short interview. Joining me today in the studio is Nadina Aboud, Operations Director at Movement Productions, which is a purpose-driven creative production company that specializes in travel style photography and videography. Hi Nadine, welcome. Hi Heidi. Um, okay, so I'd like to begin by asking you uh, to tell us more about Movement Productions and what it specializes in. Sure, so Movement Productions, as you basically pointed out, we do uh, travel style photography and videography. And we really try to um, take projects that we really believe in and that we feel sheds a light on something that we actually appreciate. So um, we try to work in projects uh, that actually have some sort of purpose or that highlight some sort of Egyptian aspect that people tend to neglect. Yeah, and I was just actually about to ask you what kind of projects have you taken part in? Oh, sure. I'd love to answer that because mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really interesting because mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is kind of do some sort of reform um, to the media uh, when it comes to the tourism industry in Egypt. Um, and we also try to use tourism as a way to highlight other people's uh, products and services. So uh, our most recent product, uh, project was with uh, Aza Fahmi, so we just released a video that we did for her. And it was a really, really cool project because mm -hmm. what she did was um, uh, she was launching a line that was inspired by the Mamelik uh, era uh, in Egypt, which is basically Islamic architecture mm -hmm. that is extremely beautiful and mm -hmm. extremely marginalized and neglected. Um, so we had to explore all of that and we had to find a specific angle and a way to actually show the beauty of the architecture and the era and how specific certain aspects are to that era mm -hmm. within the video that we were producing. So that was one of them. We've okay. also worked with the Ministry of Tourism and the Ministry of Antiquities as well. So the video that was recently released uh, by the Ministry of Tourism, People to People, mm. uh, the one that was in cooperation with Beautiful Destinations. So we actually are Beautiful Destinations local mm. partners uh, and we were able to get them here to Egypt to do oh, that. That's very so interesting. Yeah, so it was a really, really cool yeah. project as well. So what we're trying to do is kind of modernize the way um, media is being done here. Okay, and uh, in relation to that question, I wanted to know um, who are the different stakeholders you've worked with? Okay, so a lot of the stakeholders are governments uh, or ministries basically, yeah. so the Egyptian government in a lot of ways. Um, so most recently we had a really cool project with the Ministry of Tourism mm -hmm. again, uh, where it was uh, World Tourism Day and there was this big celebration. So what we did was get uh, these really, really cool content creators and photographers um, one was from Canada, another was from America, mm -hmm. and we got them here. We took them on a tour uh, around different places in Egypt where they were shooting content, and uh, they were able to display this mm -hmm. work in front of the, minist uh, the Minister of Tourism, as well as other um, ambassadors and really okay. cool um, uh, people that are actually so encouraging you, this. So you guys are involved uh, in some way or another with gov governmental so entities? Yeah, so we work a lot with the Ministry of Tourism and the Ministry of Antiquities, mm -hmm. um, but in general, we also do private work like mm -hmm. with Aza Fahmi. We've also done some work with Trafco. Um, and we have some upcoming work. I can't really talk about it. <laughs> we have some upcoming work mm -hmm. with other private mm -hmm. stakeholders. Uh, but yeah, we thought that because of the government has so much influence and because the Minister of Tourism herself, Dr. Rania Moshot, is a great advocate mm -hmm. of young people yes. and of young talent. Yes. And she really does a lot to try to make the, uh, to make the environment a lot better yeah, for people like us. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. 
Um, so the next question I wanted to ask you is, um, I know that you uh, try to manage more than one project simultaneously. So I want to know how do you do that and man maintain success at the same time? So it's incredibly exhausting. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm sure. it's honestly yeah. incredibly exhausting because you have to, so as an operations director, what I have to do mm -hmm. is make sure the preparation goes in a smoothly exactly mm -hmm. and execution goes smoothly yeah. more importantly yeah but i have to manage both the preparation aspect as well as the execution aspect okay uh so what happens with that is um it's it's extremely hectic and especially dealing with government entities things are really really different than mm -hmm. what i'm personally used to mm -hmm. in the private industry so um it's been taking a lot to kind of get used to the pace of mm -hmm. everything but my uh Base, my agenda is my planner is my best friend okay. at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. And um, are there any particular challenges you faced throughout your career with movement productions? Oh yeah, so many. <laughs> Can you give us like uh, like one challenge? Oh for sure. So for that trip where we had to coordinate, so what we did as a company is we brought these um, content creators from abroad. Uh, we had to also prepare an itinerary. We mm -hmm. had to get that itinerary approved by the ministry because they were basically financing their trips. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we had to make sure that everything was going smoothly throughout. So the difficulty with that is making yeah. sure that those two separate trips that were happening simultaneously in two different, com completely different mm -hmm. itineraries were flowing <laughs> um. and that they, everyone was getting exactly what they needed. So w I was doing that at the same time. I was mm -hmm. also managing and preparing um, exhibition um, that we have uh, that's upcoming. So managing all of that has been yeah. honestly extremely mm -hmm. hectic. Um, okay, the last question um, I want to ask you today is, do you believe your well-renowned project, Visit Egypt, has increased the percentage of tourism in Egypt? So I wouldn't say directly increased uh, the percentage of tourism, but I would say it has influenced it in a l number of ways. Uh, just because we really care about getting people here that shoot content mm -hmm. and that are able to create some sort of, they have a sphere of influence abroad and they're able to convince people to actually come here and see mm. the beauty of the country. Okay. Um, okay, thank you Nadina Aboud for being our guest uh, for you, this Heidi. week's show. Uh, this was all for today. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for next week's episode.